Hi everybody. This lecture is covering the idea of events within C Sharp. So what I've done is I've set up a Visual Studio project, a C Sharp Win WinForms project, um, that includes two pieces that we're going to use to demonstrate events. Uh, the first piece I have is a form called user form. Um, it's, right now it's nothing, it's just a basic form. Um, and then I also have inside of my models folder I've added a user class. So this class basically has three properties, first name, last name, and user ID. Um, I then also have a static method called getAllUsers. Um, if you watch the methods lecture, then this should look kind of familiar. I've gone ahead and actually created the body of the static method. So we have a variable array for called all users. Um, under do work, I go ahead and I actually create that array of users and I create a whole series of users inside of it. And then I return that array of all users from that call or from this method. Uh, then I also have a method called get manager and it returns a user and it takes in a user ID as a string. And what I have here is a method that does the work of getting that manager. Um, this method basically goes and grabs get all users and then takes that array result and grabs position number four in this case, which is my uh, manager user that has the ID of one, two, three, four, five. Uh, and then I have a kind of a stubbed out comment here to raise an event and then return the manager. Here I have a method called get manager. It returns a user and it takes a string user ID as a parameter. Uh, inside the body of this method I have a variable for all users, a variable for manager which I default to null. I then call the static get all users method to pull all of the users and then I have a for each loop that iterates over all users going one user at a time and then compares the user ID of that particular user from the collection and compares it to the parameter user ID. If those match, then that is my manager. So then I take you, the user from the loop, store it in my manager variable, and then I break out of the loop saying that I've successfully found a manager. If this if statement fails, it will continue to loop until it either finds a match or it will eventually loop over every user and then end up with no manager. Um, I have a placeholder here for an event that we're going to write, which talks or which says that a manager was found, and then we'll return the manager itself. All right, so that's our user class. So from this user form, what I want to do is I'm going to add a few controls to this. I'm going to add a list box, and this list box is going to list all of our users. I'm going to add a button and this button will be our get manager button and then I'm going to add one label actually I'll add two labels <laughs> uh, this label will say manager and then this label will actually be where we store the manager name and we'll call it, we'll give it a name of LBL manager name. So that's from the properties dialog box. I'm going to the name property and I'm making it LBL manager name. That's how I'll refer to it from my code. Uh, the button, I'm going to call this BTN get manager. And then the list box will be LST users. All right, so this will be my form. Going to make one additional adjustment. I'm going to find my label and I'm going to just add a small uh, border. And that's just to make it a little more visible. Okay. So I'm going to double click on my user form and on form load, what I want to do is I want to go and get all users. So I'm going to need a user array to store my users in. And then inside of all users, I'm going to call user dot get all users. 
And then the last step I'm going to say is LST users dot data source equals all users. And this will load the user collection into the list box. Now, one thing that you're probably seeing is that user is coming up as being not found. The reason for that is that we need to have a using statement for our models. So because we created a models folder in our project, that went ahead and created a models namespace under cp underscore week four dot models. So we'll add a using statement to the top for that. And then our then user will resolve correctly. So from here I can show you that there is one static method off the user class called get all users, which returns an array of users. We then take that array of users and store it as our data source. So if we have five and run, we then get a list box full of class names, not users' names. So it's a cp underscore week four dot models dot user. What's happening is that the list box is calling the two string method off of our user class. And when it calls that method, unless we override it, it will always return the full class name, including namespaces. So what we need to do is we need to override that in our user class. So if we jump back into user, what we'll need to do is go down to the bottom here, and then we're going to type override, and then we can hit tab and tab again, and then we can say to string. And then we'll do public string, I'm sorry, public override string to string. What we'll do is we'll go down to the bottom here and we'll say override space, and then we'll select to string. What this will do is it'll give us a means of overriding that true string call. So what we'll do is we'll return first name, last name. And that'll give us basically the full name to appear in the box. So if we F5 again and run, we now have first name, last name for every one of our users. All right, so that piece of code is now functional. So from our user form, we're in good shape. Now the next thing that I want to implement is Git Manager. Now when I double click on Git Manager, you'll notice a few things that are happening. You'll notice that there's a function here called btn git manager underscore click. It has a void return type and it takes an object parameter and an event arcs parameter. This method is the event handler and it gets stored as a delegate, or I'm sorry, it gets stored as part of an event delegate. So if we actually right click and do a copy and then do a control F and we'll paste that function in here and we're going to search across the entire solution. We're going to find another reference to btn get manager underscore click. There's one and there's the second. So this is within the user form .designer .cs. Line 53, you'll find a reference to btn get manager underscore click. What this is doing is it's creating a delegate event handler, and it's storing this delegate using our button um, button get manager underscore click method as the function that it's pointing to it's being stored in the click event. So what does all this mean? What do, how do we understand or interpret this? So the BTN manager, or the BTN get manager is our button. Our button has a click event. What we're wanting to do is we want to add a new event handler or delegate to the click event so that when the click occurs, our method BTN get manager underscore click is called. And the event handler delegate is defined as saying that we must provide a method that returns void and accepts two parameters, object and event args. 
So the get manager underscore click method returns void and accepts two event args, an object, or I'm sorry, it accepts two parameters, object and event args. So we have a method that meets that specification and we're then wrapping it inside of a new delegate called event handler and we're assigning it to the click event which accepts delegates. Now something that you may find interesting is that this is not simply an equals but it's a plus equals. You can actually hook multiple delegates up to an event. So you can have multiple things get called, multiple methods get called when an event occurs. You can't, you're not restricted to only having one method be assigned to a particular event. So that's good to know. So when the button click occurs, what we need to do is we need to get the manager. Now to do this, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find the user that was selected. So this will be user selected user. And we're going to get the selected user from the list box. And we're going to grab it from the selected item. Now selected item returns object. This is a property of the list box. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a cast and cast it back to a user. And this will allow us to then get that selected user. Then we can say selected user that get manager. And the manager ID will be one, two, three, four, five. And then this will give us our manager. And then the last step will be to put the manager's name into the label. So this will fetch the manager. And then we can say if manager does not equal null, meaning that we have a manager that came back from the method. And tell us the manager. We can say else. LBL manager not named equals no manager found. F6. So F5 and we'll run. We'll click on Kevin, we'll click Geek Manager, and we get Steve Jobs back as the manager. So that code is functioning correctly. So this is the mechanics of creating a method and then hooking it to an event. And we can also m do this work of subscribing to an event. We can do that manually. We don't have to do it um, through the GUI. We can do that in our own code. So for example, let's say on the form load, we also wanted to say um, when we click on the manager label, um, Visual Studios likes to help us because it understands events. So we can say LBL manager name dot click plus equals, and then it'll pop up and say, it looks like you're trying to create an event handler. If you click tab, it will generate a new function name that mimics or method name that mimics the event. So it went ahead and said, well, let's make one called LBL manager name underscore click. And you can see the relationship or the similarities there. If you press tab a second time, it will go ahead and generate a method stubbed out based on the delegate that the click event is subscribing to. So because it's a click event and it has a delegate associated, it knows that this method has to comply with that delegate structure. So in this case it has to return void and accept two parameters, an object and event args. So with this we can now do work. In this case the work that I want to do is I want to do a message box dot show and I want to show the value from the text box. Or I'm sorry, from the label. So it's nothing fancy, but what we're doing is when the form load occurs, we're wiring up this event handler to listen for an event. So we'll click on Kevin, we'll click Get Manager, we'll click here, and our click on the label generated this message box. Now the last thing that I would like to do is create our own event 
inside of this class. So to do that, we actually need two things. We're going to first have to create a delegate. So we'll say public delegate, avoid. We'll call this manager loaded. And this delegate will ex expect one event argument. Next, inside of our class, I'm going to create one public event using the manager loaded delegate, and we'll call this manager loaded. Now, this is the name of the event, this is the delegate. Um, let me do this just to clarify. I'm going to call that the manager loaded delegate just for clarity purposes. So this is the name of our event. Now down here on the raise event line on line 57, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a combination of things. I'm going to do an if statement. So I'm going to say if manager loaded does not equal null. And what that means to you and I is if manager loaded has someone subscribing to it, if it's been set to at least one delegate, then call it. If it hasn't been set, then don't call it. So we'll say manager loaded, and then we'll pass in new event args. So we now have an event called manager loaded. From our user form, we can come back and we can actually subscribe to manager loaded off of our selected user. So we can say selected user dot manager loaded plus equals and it's going to generate for us a method called selected user underscore manager loaded. So I'll hit tab and then hit tab again for it to actually create my method. And in here you'll notice that it has the method or the variable name and the event name and then one parameter for those arguments. Um, from here, we can then go ahead and do another message box. And we can say manager loaded. So we'll do an F5 click on that, click get user. We then get our message box executing because we have successfully loaded a manager. And there's our manager. We can click on our label and we get our, our pop-up box. So this is a basic demonstration of how events can be wired into your classes and you can use them to trigger actions or activities to occur within your application. They're also just very powerful, especially with forms design, because you can then put form controls into your application, double click on them, and wire up to these events just simply by double clicking and letting Visual Studio generate the methods or the event handlers for you.